come in. Hello, Dr. Guantua. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Fatma. How have you been? I'm doing well. It's have good to see you. Good to see you, too. So what brings you in today? Well, it's not my health this time. Uh huh. As you know, I'm studying to be a registered nurse. Oh, wow. That's very exciting. Yeah. So I'm about to give a presentation on HIV to our community group. Oh, that sounds great. Um, I know just a little bit about that disease, but what I really want to understand is how I can help the people in my village understand it more. And uh, probably you could help me with a little of your knowledge. That's great news, Fatma. You know, AIDS has killed millions of women, men, and children throughout the world. I'm glad you're interested in learning about HIV AIDS and teaching others so we can help prevent the spread of this disease. You know, HIV AIDS is preventable and it is also treatable. We need to inform people about how to prevent the spread of HIV AIDS and the importance of diagnosis and treatment if they have the illness. And uh, what causes this uh, AIDS, if I can call it HIV? Um, so HIV AIDS is caused by a virus, which is a very small living thing that can cause infections. There are many types of viruses causing different kind of infections. Um, but the virus that causes AIDS is called HIV. Oh. So when talking about HIV and AIDS, or if you notice most of the time we say HIV AIDS together mm -hmm. because they are the same illness but in different stages. And uh, what really happens with an HIV infection? Um, yeah, I can tell you more about it. Um, the building blocks of our body are called cells. Mm -hmm. And our body is made of many different types of cells, each with a different function. Mm -hmm. So, for example, muscle cells help us, help, they help us to move our body. Mm -hmm. And the nerve cells help us feel and think. And we have skin cells which protect our body. Mm -hmm. And uh, when HIV mm -hmm. enters the body, mm -hmm. it goes to affect a specific group of cells in the body. Oh. And these cells that HIV attacks are the cells of our immune system. The immune system is, protects us from infections and diseases such as cold, pneumonia, tuberculosis, and even really? cancers. Uh, so when the immune system is infected with HIV, mm -hmm. it doesn't function as well as it should, and we are more likely to get infections and diseases. Oh, okay. But when someone is said to have HIV, or when they're infected with HIV, mm -hmm. but the immune system is still functioning well enough to keep them healthy, a person may be inf infected with HIV for a short time or for many years without showing any signs of illness. So we call this stage asymptomatic. Um, and, there, um, and basically we, what we mean is you have the virus, mm -hmm. but you're not showing any symptoms. Uh, Dr. Guantua, what really causes AIDS, if I may ask? Uh, so HIV AIDS is caused by a virus, mm -hmm. which is a very small living thing that mm -hmm. can cause infections. There are many types of viruses the virus that causes AIDS is called HIV. When talking about HIV and AIDS, we often say HIV AIDS together. I'm sure you've heard of that. Mm -hmm. Because there are different stages of the same infection. Mm. Uh, what really happens with HIV infection? I'll tell you more about it, Fatma. The building blocks of our body are mm -hmm. called cells. Our body is made of many different types of cells, each cell with a different function. For example, muscle cells help us move our body. Then we have nerve cells, which help helps us to feel, think. Then skin cells protect our body. So when HIV enters the body, it infects specific group of cells in the body. The cells that mm -hmm. HIV attacks are mm -hmm. the cells of our immune system. And the immune system protects us from infections and diseases such as cold, pneumonia, tuberculosis, cancers, and many others. Okay. When the immune system is infected with HIV, it doesn't function as well as it should. 
and we are more likely to get infections and diseases. Okay. So someone is said to have HIV when they're infected with HIV, but their immune system is still functioning well enough to keep them healthy. Okay. And a person may be infected with HIV for a short time or for many years without showing any signs of illness. Really? And this is called asymptomatic infection. So this asymptomatic simply means there is an infection, so the mm -hmm. person has the HIV w in them, mm -hmm. but they're showing no symptoms. The person has an HIV inf infection, but the damage it is causing is not felt or seen yet. Oh. Uh, so someone with an HIV infection usually doesn't have symptoms, so they often don't know they have an infection? That's very right. They may, no, they may not know they are infected for many years. Mm -hmm. However, eventually the person infected with HIV mm -hmm. will show visible signs of illness, such as weight loss, fever, diarrhea, and they can become sick with other diseases like tuberculosis or pneumonia. Okay. And if they do a blood test, it will show a deficiency of the immune system cells, which are called CD4 cells. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard of many people saying yeah. CD4 and CD4. Yes, it's a common term even in the community. Mm -hmm. When this happens, the person is said to have AIDS. And if AIDS is untreated, it will always lead to death, either rapidly or slowly. I see. Uh, Dr. Guantua, what happens if HIV AIDS is treated? Can treatment really help? Yes, Fatma. There, there's been much progress made with treatment of, for HIV AIDS. And um, in recent years, most people who undergo treatment, mm -hmm. they end up living full lives and long lives. Mm. Treatment is started immediately once the diagnosis is made. If the treatment is started when the patient has no symptoms, mm -hmm. they can be kept from developing symptoms for a long time. Okay. And they may not develop sy symptoms at all. Mm -hmm. But if the patient already has symptoms, mm -hmm. such as fever, weight loss, tuberculosis, or other diseases or cancer, mm -hmm. the treatment will likely help improve or eliminate the symptoms. There is no cure for HIV AIDS. I want you to really know that. Okay. Any cure stories or magical cures you may have heard about, they're just not true. Oh. There is treatment for HIV AIDS that will improve life and help patients live long life. Mm -hmm. The key is early care and treatment. Early treatment can delay or prevent development of symptoms of HIV AIDS mm -hmm. and the development of other diseases which are associated with HIV AIDS. Oh, okay. It is very important with the treatment of HIV AIDS to take the treatment medicine every day for the rest of the patient's life. Oh, now I understand, Dr. Guantua. You say that many people may have been infected with HIV and not even know because they haven't developed any symptoms yet. Um, what is the best way to find out if uh, you are infected with HIV so treatment can be started to prevent the disease from progressing to AIDS? The best way to know mm -hmm. how the diagnosis of H for HIV or AIDS is made is with a blood test. HIV AIDS can be diagnosed at the asymptomatic stage mm -hmm. or when patients have, uh, have already developed symptoms mm -hmm. by performing this blood test. It is very important to test for HIV AIDS as early as possible so that treatment can be started in time. Uh -huh. um, another thing, <laughs> when does an infected person spread the virus that causes HIV AIDS? Unfortunately, Fatma, mm -hmm. an infected person can spread HIV at any time during the infection. Oh this God. includes the time when they don't have any symptoms at all. Oh my! A person could have HIV and not even know it or notice it. Mm -hmm. And then they could spread it to others and keep on spreading it more and more. Not even noticing until someone develops some symptoms or probably get tested. Exactly, Fatma. Oh. 
<gasps> that is why I, it is very, very important to do the test. Testing allows you to know if you have HIV. This way, treatment can be started to keep you from developing symptoms mm -hmm. or to improve symptoms if you already have them. You can also see why it is much better to prevent an HIV infection than to treat an infection for the rest of your life. Yes, that is very true. We need to understand how HIV is spread. By knowing how it is spread, we can prevent infections with HIV. Uh, Dr. Guantua, how is HIV spread? HIV is most often spread by having sexual intercourse with someone who has HIV AIDS without using a condom. Mm. Having sexual intercourse without a male or female condom is called unprotected sex. Mm -hmm. The virus is passed from the infected man or woman mm -hmm. to their sexual partner. Okay. It can spread from, from a man to a woman mm -hmm. or from a woman to a man. Another way HIV is spread mm -hmm. is when an HIV AIDS infected mother delivers a baby. The baby can become infected while it is inside its mother or during the process of delivery. It is possible to prevent this infection from occurring by diagnosing the mother before delivery of the baby and treating the mother and the baby around the delivery time. So. Babies can also become infected by drinking the breast milk of a woman infected with HIV. But this can be avoided by making sure all women who are nursing are, are not infected. Okay. And if the nursing woman is infected, mm -hmm. another uninfected woman can be used for nursing instead of using the infected mother's milk. Okay. This will protect the baby from becoming infected from the mother's milk. Mm -hmm. But there may be sometimes a situation where the mother is HIV positive and there are no uninfected alternative sources to provide breast milk for the infant. Mm -hmm. In such situations, it may be possible for the HIV-infected mother to breastfeed the child for the first few months. But both must be under the care of a doctor mm -hmm. and treatment must be provided. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It is very important to prevent a baby from being infected from a mother who has HIV during pregnancy, delivery, or during breastfeeding. And now I know why all pregnant women should be t tested for HIV. True. This is so they can be treated and their babies can be prevented from getting HIV AIDS. Are there other possible ways to become infected with uh, an HIV? Oh yes, Fatma, there are other ways. Mm -hmm. Another situation where HIV is spread is when a circumcision is performed with an unclean blade mm -hmm. that has been used previously on someone with HIV. There are many similar situations that can transmit HIV, such as when an umbilical cord on a baby is cut with an HIV-contaminated knife, mm -hmm. or when an open wound or injury on our body is touched by instruments somehow contaminated with HIV virus from an infected person. Um, also, HIV infection can occur from sharing a needle to inject drugs or mm. sharing other drug items with someone who has HIV. It can also occur by receiving a blood, transfu uh, blood transfusion mm -hmm. from someone who is infected with HIV. But this situation is no longer significant risk because blood to be used for transfusions is tested for HIV. And uh, very rarely a HIV infection can occur from sharing a toothbrush or shaving razor with someone who has HIV. Mm. There are a lot of different ways to get HIV AIDS, but they all seem to involve blood, breast milk, or sexual intercourse. Oh, absolutely. All the ways that HIV spreads involve situations where some blood, breast milk or sexual fluids from the infected person gets into the body of another person through a wound, injury, mm -hmm. or in the process of sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. Generally, the risk for most of us is from exposure to the sexual fluids or blood of an infected person, including when they don't know they are infected. Uh -huh. 
So HIV AIDS spreads by having contact with uh, blood, sexual fluids, and uh, breast milk of an infected person. Is it spread in other ways such as hugging or kissing? No, 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 <laughs> Fatma. Oh. HIV AIDS is not spread by just working or being around someone who has HIV. Mm -hmm. It is not spread by sitting on toilet seat. Mm -hmm. It is not spread by hugging or kissing. Mm -hmm. It is not spread by doing everyday things like sharing a meal or being stunned or beaten by an insect. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of myths out there that are not true. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there are also myths about treatment. The only treatment that are effective mm -hmm. are those available through health care providers. Mm -hmm. There are no cures for HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. The treatments from a health care provider improve the symptoms and can make a person feel much better and live a long life, but they are not cured. This is why they need to take the pills for treatment for the rest of their lives. Uh. It is good that you cleared this up for me, Dr. Guantua. I have heard a lot of stories that I now know that they were not true. <laughs> yes, Fatma. Now that we know the, the ways that HIV AIDS is spread mm -hmm. and ways that it is not spread, mm -hmm. let's talk about ways to prevent ourselves from becoming infected with HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one important situation is uh, a pregnant woman. They need to be sure they do not have HIV so they don't infect their babies during pregnancy, during birth, or during nursing. Um, the baby might get infected with the breast milk, as we all know, so that is correct. Yes, Fatima, that okay. is correct. This is why all pregnant women mm -hmm. should be tested for HIV AIDS with a blood test mm -hmm. and they should get treated if they have HIV so that the baby is less likely to get infected. Mm -hmm. um, another way we could have uh, exposure is uh, through contact with blood from injuries or wounds of an infected person. That is why it is important for healthcare workers to use clean instruments in the clinic and use gloves to protect themselves and others as well. Is that correct? You must have learned all that in <laughs> nursing school, haven't yes. you? Yes, that definitely. That is very good. That is very good. This is why it is important to get trained healthcare providers so you are sure they are well trained mm -hmm. and will protect you from exposure to HIV. You can't be sure about cleanliness with circumcision or deliveries by untrained people. Yeah. So the main risk of exposure for most of us during our lifetime is by exposure to the sexual fluids transmitted by an infected person with HIV. Other than uh, healthcare workers, most of us rarely have exposure to the blood or wounds of another infected person and uh, a mother to a child transmitting through pregnancy, through birth, or through breast milk is a risk for only pregnant women, I can say, but not most of us. Oh, yes. HIV, AIDS, and other sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea, or syphilis, chlamydia, and herpes are spread by having unprotected sexual intercourse mm -hmm. with someone who has HIV AIDS mm -hmm. or these other sexually transmitted infections. Remember that unprotected sexual intercourse means sexual intercourse without a male or a female condom. Mm. If uh, I don't have sexual intercourse with anybody, I will not get HIV, right? Correct. When you don't have sexual intercourse, this is called abstinence. You cannot get sexually transmitted HIV AIDS if you are not having sexual intercourse. Abstinence is very effective on preventing HIV AIDS. The good thing about abstinence, it also prevents from other sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, and the like. It also eliminates a possibility of getting pregnant. You will hear abstinence being advocated by religious groups as well as cultural groups. Mm -hmm. 
Well, likewise, you will not get HIV AIDS from masturbation since it doesn't involve anyone else. Mm. And uh, what about if I have sexual intercourse with only one partner? That's a good question. If you have sexual intercourse with only one person mm -hmm. and that person does not have HIV AIDS and that person does not have sexual intercourse with anybody else, you will not get sexually transmitted HIV AIDS. You have to remember that you and the other person must both be free of HIV AIDS and not have any other sexual partners who might give it to you. When two partners only have sex with each other and don't have sexual intercourse with anyone else, mm -hmm. it is called monogamy. Within any sexual relationship, whether married or unmarried, having a monogamous relationship will reduce a possibility of becoming infected with um, HIV AIDS or other sexually transmitted infections. It is very important for couples to talk with each other about having a committed monogamous relationship. Mm. What you're trying to say, Dr. Guanto, the main point is really to know if your sexual partner ever has sexual intercourse with someone else. <sighs> but that could be difficult. That is truly the main dilemma. Mm. But you need to be sure you and your sexual partner only have sexual intercourse with each other, or you need to use a condom to protect yourself. Okay. Remember that many people who have HIV don't have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. The only way to be sure is to have an HIV AIDS blood test mm -hmm. and remain monogamous. Okay. The term monogamous, as I have said before, it means you only have sex with mm -hmm. one person. Uh. Um, what are my options for protecting myself from HIV AIDS and uh, from other sexually transmitted infections? Well, this is an easy question to answer. Okay. The only option for protection are male or female condoms. Mm -hmm. There are no other options that are effective. Male or female condoms are not effective in every case, but they greatly reduce the risk of becoming infected with HIV or other sexually transmitted infections. Okay. When having sexual intercourse with an infected person, condoms can protect you. Mm -hmm. Condoms protect against HIV AIDS and also protect from other sexually transmitted infections like syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, and chlamydia. Mm -hmm. Since condoms are the only options for protections from HIV, AIDS, and other sexually transmitted diseases, um, it is important for me to understand how they work and how they are used. I'm glad you asked that, Fatma. I will show you how the condoms work. I actually have some of them here in my office. So there are two types of condoms. Okay. There, there's a male condom mm -hmm. and a female condom. And they both basically work by trapping the sexual fluids um, so that HIV, AIDS, and other sexually transmitted infections, which are caused by viruses, cannot pass between a man and a woman during sexual intercourse. Okay. The male or female condom prevents that direct contact of the skin and sexual fluids during sexual intercourse, and this reduces the risk of these infections. Oh. I'll show you the male condom first. Please do. So, let me open it for you to see here. This is usually made of a very thin um, latex sheath, mm -hmm. as you can see here. Interesting. Yeah. And it is usually pre uh, placed over the erect penis mm -hmm. before sexual intercourse. Okay. And then it is removed after sexual intercourse and then discarded. You cannot reuse this. Oh. Some men or women may develop itchiness or a rash when the latex condom is used. Okay. So in such cases, mm -hmm. a latex-free um, condom can be used. Okay. I'm wiping my hands because these have a <laughs> lubricant. I was as you wondering can see, about it's a that. Bit <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. So um, 
There's another kind of uh, condom made by sheepskin. Mm -hmm. These ones are not protective against HIV, AIDS, and other sexually transmitted infections. Mm -hmm. So they should not be used for this person, oh, okay. uh, for this purpose. Um, remember that condoms should always be used with anal sex as well as vaginal sex. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then let me show you the female condom as well. This is usually latex free and uh, it is like a tube. Mm -hmm. It has a closed end, as you can see here, mm -hmm. and an open end. And they each contain a ring. Um, the closed end mm -hmm. is inserted into the vagina mm -hmm. and the open end ring partially covers the skin outside the vagina. Mm -hmm. Inserting the closed end of the female condom into the vagina may seem difficult in okay. the beginning, but it becomes easier with practice. Mm. And the good thing, it can be placed in the vagina up to eight hours oh. before sexual intercourse. Okay. And it is also latex free, so mm. there is no concern about rash or itchiness with its use. Mm. One thing I want you to know, Fatma, mm -hmm. you cannot use male and female condom at the same time. Oh. You either use one or the other. and um, a condom must be used every time there is sexual intercourse for it to be effective. Mm. Yeah. And as I have said before, it should be lubricated to avoid damage to the vaginal tissues. Mm -hmm. But you shouldn't use petroleum jelly or other oil-based lubricants because they can damage the condom. Okay. Um, but most condoms are already lubricated, as you have seen, my hands were very sticky. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't think it is enough, a water-based lubricant can be used if you think you need it. Okay. One thing you should know is you have to be careful to avoid breaking the condom mm -hmm. or having it come off during sexual intercourse. So if it is used correctly, condoms are very effective at preventing HIV AIDS. Uh, Dr. Guanto, I have heard that condoms are used to reduce the risks of becoming pregnant with sexual intercourse. Um, is this different than protection from HIV AIDS? Oh yes, condoms are one of the methods that can be used to reduce the risk of pregnancy. They are fairly effective at this, but they are the only method that protects against HIV AIDS and other sexually transmitted infections. Condoms cannot prevent pregnancies or the spread of HIV AIDS and sexually transmitted infections every time they are used, but they do greatly reduce the chance of pregnancy and disease. Uh, now I see how condoms have an important role in reducing the risk of HIV AIDS and other sexually transmitted infections. Um, they also are an effective means of preventing pregnancies if uh, used properly. Um, another thing, I understand the importance of testing HIV AIDS. Um, when should a person be tested for HIV AIDS, Dr. Guanto? Let me tell you more about testing, Fatma. Mm -hmm. Testing for HIV AIDS is called voluntary testing and counseling. It is free and can be done at any time you wish. An expert will describe the test to you before testing, mm -hmm. take a blood sample for testing, and then answer questions and discuss your results following the test. This is a procedure these experts do regularly, so they are excellent sources for information and help. Mm -hmm. You should be tested every time when there is an unprotected sex, which means sexual intercourse without a condom, mm -hmm. when you are unsure if your sexual partner has HIV AIDS. You should be tested when you have unprotected sex or protected sex with a partner who may have HIV AIDS. You should be tested, uh, tested if there's any other possible exposure through a wound or injury or any possibility that you have contact with HIV in any way. Okay. And any other exposure you have had, such as IV drug use, mm -hmm. you have to be tested. You should also be tested if you notice you are getting unexplained symptoms of weight loss, fever, long-term diarrhea, or tuberculosis. In all these instances, you have to be tested. Mm. I'm not sure. How often do I do a test? 
you can have an HIV AIDS test as often as you feel the need to do so. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you remember the president of Tanzania and his wife, <laughs> Jakaya and Salma Kikweta? I sure they do. They have both been tested for HIV AIDS. Yes, that yeah. is correct. Anyone can be tested if they are concerned they may have had exposure to HIV. Okay. It is best to have the test rather than be undiagnosed because the treatment can keep you healthier for a much longer time. Mm. And uh, what if someone has unprotected sexual intercourse with an infected person? Is there anything that can be done after the sexual intercourse to reduce the chances of getting HIV AIDS? Um, another situation would be if uh, someone who is raped um, they may have been exposure to HIV from their attacker. What can be done for these people? These are serious situations, Fatma, mm -hmm. and treatment can be given to help prevent HIV AIDS from developing after the exposure. People who have had a high likelihood to exposure of HIV AIDS can receive testing and treatment called post-exposure prophylaxis or called PEP. In short, it's called PEP. Mm. And PEP should be started as soon as possible after the exposure. It involves counseling and testing as well as immediate treatment with medication. Mm. An additional test for HIV is usually done 12 weeks later. PEP reduces the chances of infection from HIV. It is important to be aware that medication cannot be started if it 72 hours have already passed since the incident occurred. Mm. This is very important information, Dr. Guantua. Thank you very much for explaining the details of HIV AIDS to me. I'm really looking forward to teaching others about the disease, see how they can prevent the new infections from HIV and treat those people who are actually infected so they can improve their health and their lives. I am very impressed with your interest in educating the members of your community about HIV AIDS. You are going to be a good nurse, oh, thank Fatma. You. Thank it you. It is doctor. important to remember that HIV AIDS is not a punishment. Mm -hmm. It is not a crime. Mm -hmm. It is not a war. It is not a horror. It is not witchcraft or all these other things that people think. HIV AIDS is a disease that any of us can get. That's and true. it can be prevented and treated. That is very true. Dr. Guantua, I really appreciate your time, your knowledge, and I'm looking forward to coming back for more questions. Thank you, Fatma. Thank you I very much. I wish you much. all the best you in your too. studies. You too. Thank you. Have good a good luck. day. Thank Thanks. you. You too.